Okay. These are the closing remarks for HS18. <laughs> I'm Aaron Blaisdell. I'm on the board of the Ancestry Foundation. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Ancestral Symposium, along with Brent Pottinger. Well, thanks. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, I'm going to try and get Brent here next year. We'll see if I can swing him out. Um, let's see. What's next? Oh, cool. I want to first start by thanking our amazing exhibitors. They are so central to the operation, the mission, and the enjoyment of this conference. And I hope that it's a win-win, that, uh, that what we bring to them and what they bring to us is all mutual. I know I enjoyed quite a bit uh, mingling with the, the, uh, the vendors. And it's always a, a real favorite part of the, this conference. Uh, thank you to the presenters. Let's put, uh, let's actually, let's clap our hands first for the exhibitors, exhibitors, all right. And now we'll roll this pause into the presenters. All right, presenters, all right. It's the, obviously, we wouldn't have a conference if there weren't presenters, so that's kind of important. And we know that it's not always easy to get up here and speak in front of an audience and uh, about a subject that you're very passionate about. But I thought that the caliber of the talks, all the ones I've seen and what I've heard from other people this year, is that it's been the best among the best. Uh, and that we're just want to keep continuing to do that. So really, it's a, I appreciate these presenters, both the, the, the speakers and the uh, poster presenters. And let's pat yourselves on the back, you attendees. You came all the way to Big Sky Country, right? Not always an easy place to get to. Um, but it was a beautiful weather up here, and it was wonderful hanging out with everybody or with our tribe here. So you attendees are also a core central part of who we are. And we're always trying. What's amazing is I always see new faces along with the old every year. And so I know that we're growing. I know we're evolving and changing. And Daryl, I know we do need to continue to strive harder to reach people who are more disadvantaged uh, but that also need to be included in uh, have being a stakeholder in this process. And we will continue to work, as I'm sure Keith and Michelle are knowing, also continuing to work on doing that. It's easier to call that out than to make it happen, but that doesn't mean we aren't going to try and we'll continue to try. Also, a very hearty thanks to the volunteers, please. <laughs> they are the magic behind the curtain. Right? They keep things running so smoothly so that everything is, is beautiful and, and that our event uh, runs smoothly, that the presenter is able to present and the attendees are able to, to engage. And so it's just, you know, I'm not going to name all the names. They're up here. You know a lot of them by name, by face now after the end of, of the uh, conference. And so we're going to continue to rely on these hardworking individuals. Thanks to Amanda. <laughs> Speaking, right, stand up, Amanda. Come on, come on, come on. If there's a wizard behind the curtain, you know, all those other people behind the curtain, all right, Amanda is the one. Yes, please don't go. <laughs> Thanks to the Ancestral Health uh, Society Board, the Ancestry Foundation Board. Uh, it's a bunch of us. It's an evolving and changing group of folks. Not all of them could be here every year. You know, there's always a few people that can't be here. Some were intending to be here and just couldn't make it at the last minute for various reasons. But we, throughout the year, we, you know, have quarterly meetings. We have c interactions over email and over the phone to try to make sure that the efforts of this society uh, continue um, to, to meet the successes that we've had in the past. And so we are always open to new membership on the board. And it's, it, usually we do every year or so have some people start to rotate off, other people's rotating on. So this is always an opportunity. If you know of ways of getting people who really should be a stakeholder in this process onto the board, please let us know. E email us or talk to us at the meeting. Let us know this kind of person, this person would be a pers perfect person to be involved in the leadership. And let's have a conversation about that. So we're always open for that. 
Ah, here's a, where my little forte comes in. So a few years ago, with the help of people like Paul Jaminet, we started the Journal of Evolution and Health. And this journal is free, open access online, available both free to publish in and free to access from anywhere in the world that you have access to a device that connects to the internet. And so this has been a labor of love of mine. I'm one of the editors in chief of the journal along with David Pendergrass. And we have a marvelous board of assistant uh, or associate editors, people that review for the journal. Many people in this room have played a pro uh, part in this process. We continue to want to seek all kinds of Solic of uh, presentations, I mean uh, publications, uh, from the community, both within academia and science and outside of it, whether in practitioners, case reports, scientific clinical trials, um, even um, from the lay public, but the people who are really interested in have something to say and really can put it together in a way that we can have a nice, rigorous presentation of some important topics this is the, the place, that's the, the written part uh, mission of the foundation is to provide a platform for scholarly publication, but that's open for all and not, not part of it like an ivory tower um, kind of system. And speaking of the Journal of Evolution and Health, starting a couple years ago, I think it was the um, suggestion of Linda Frasetto, if I'm not mistaken, to have a symposium issue every year where all of the presenters, both speakers and poster presenters, are then invited to submit an extended abstract to be published in a special issue of the journal. And we've done that for the past two years. It's been very successful. Sometimes it takes a while before the, for the whole review process. And so the previous one from last year's conference just went live in about, I think it was two months ago. And so the, all of you who were presenters expect an email from me sometime in the near future with an explanation of how you can submit an extended abstract of your talk or poster. And please, I encourage you to do that. It's a wonderful opportunity to spread your message further beyond the uh, videos that of your talks that will be online uh, at some point. Donating to AHS, what should I say? What does it say up there? Oh yeah, we are a nonprofit 501c3 um, education uh, mission um, organization, uh, and we donations to us are tax deductible. We've had some wonderful donors in the past, and we will continue to seek uh, donations, support to keep the mission alive and growing. Um, I'm not a great person at. Uh, at these kind of fundraising stuff. I write scientific grants. I could write a really great NIH or NSF grant, but talking about donating, donating is uh, not in my forte. I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in. Hmm? Do it. Uh, yes, do uh, it. So, yeah, so I will want to thank that one of the board members you saw up there, uh, Jake uh, Jacobson, has been a member of this organization from the inception and he has been a huge benefactor to our society. So let's give a round of applause to Jake, who's really made this whole enterprise a success. Is Jake in the room? I'm trying to look for him. He's on an airport run. Oh, see, he's such a good Samaritan. <laughs> let's see, what else? Ah, AHS 19, what should I say about that? It's question marks. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Um, so w we have had some good suggestions about um, San Diego, Arizona. Um, and if you or anyone you know is actually affiliated with any universities in that area, that could really help us to secure space. So if you're a student or if you know a faculty member or a staff member, even someone who could be a university administrator, um, having anyone on campus who could help us with our initial application can sometimes really help. So specifically, I would say San Diego and Arizona would be the, um, the, place, the places we're looking at right now. So. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that'll be announced once we figure out where the next one is. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so we always have a survey at the end, and we take that, uh, the information we get, the feedback from the survey to heart. Uh, and so, is there a link or are they going to get an email? No, they got the it. The link's up. 
Oh, they are, okay, you already got an email, by the way, yeah. <laughs> um, to submit your feedback, any kind of feedback you have. If, it, if you do have negative, I mean, you know, like, like criticisms, make them constructive if you can. If they're in the form of constructive comment or feedback, that's something that's more actionable for us. And so, and also it doesn't hurt our feelings as badly. <laughs> so, <laughs> trust me, I read my student course evaluations and some of them are, yeah. You just have to grow a thick skin. So please, your feedback is very important for us to continue to improve and, and refine uh, the, the approach. And is that it? So please, a round of applause to everybody for a wonderful another meeting. And we will see you at AHS 19. Yeah.